Hello and assalamu alaikum this is Zafar Ali Khan this is lecture 2 floating point so we will start with the structure of the floating point so let's say we have 10 bits for the floating point all right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 out of which 3 bits are allocated for exponent and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 bits are allocated for mantissa in this the point lies between first two bit point is sometimes called radix in maths anyway you have to remember it with the name point as usual exponent is in two's complement form and mantissa is also in two's complement form then exponent is an integer because exponent is basically holding the number of times we have to move the point if exponent is positive we move towards right if exponent is negative we move towards left so it is basically an integer and exponent basically tells how many times we have to move the point in order to get the right number in mantissa the point lies between first two bits so in a way if you look at this so these are first two bits so mantissa if grows it grows towards right all right if mantissa grows it grows towards right so the point lies between first two bits so the very first bit is 1 and the second bit is 0.5 and it goes further towards the right 0.5 0.25 0.125 and so and so forth so if we have got many bits in mantissa it will actually grow towards the smaller fraction on the right all right so on the other hand if you look at exponent exponent is integer there is no fraction side no decimal side in it so so decimal is actually when it is growing sorry uh, exponent when it is growing it is growing towards the left all right and there is no uh, point in it because it is integer so taking that into account exponent is 1 2 4 and since it is two's complement it is negative 4 similarly this is 1 then we have got 2 power minus 1 2 power minus 2 2 power minus 3 2 power minus 4 2 power minus 5 2 power minus 6 and you may write in decimals as well 0.5.25.125.0625.0325.0125625 i would suggest that you should remember to the fifth decimal place on the right and since it is in two's complement this one would be of Uh, negative sign so negative 1 then 0.5 0.25 and so and so forth so mantissa as i just said when it is filled it is filled left to right and as i said exponent when it is and when it is filled it is filled right to left mantissa is real because it has got a point in it now when mantissa is filled left to right it actually drops from the right side so we are filling in mantissa from left to right let's say if we have got more bits to fill in but we have got less space so the bits will drop from the right and similarly exponent will be filled right to left all right and will drop from the left all right this is what we have to remember now if we lose bits because we have got more bits and less bits are available in mantissa that would not affect the whole number it would only be uh, a rounding error it would only be a rounding error a little loss of fraction a little loss of accuracy so mantissa is to accuracy or precision but if we lose any bits in positive exponent or negative exponent that would actually hurt the magnitude of the number since exponent is holding the number of times point will have to jump on the right or on the left so that jumping on the right will make the number bigger and on the left make the number smaller yet will they both will require a lot of bits so if we have to move away from the uh zero on the right side for positive number for a larger number there will be a drop in size because we will not be able to move as many bits because there is less space available in exponent so exponent is to size all right so mantissa is to accuracy exponent is to size and there are two terms which are 
basically overflow and underflow overflow and underflow they both are for positive numbers only overflow and underflow only occurs when the whole number is positive the number that we are converting to floating point is positive so when overflow occurs it means that we are trying to move far from the zero on the right side it means we are trying to make the number as big as possible to have a higher magnitude number so that is overflow but if we are trying to reach closest to zero and for that we have to move the point towards the left as much as possible and there is a loss of bit because the number is so small that we cannot hold that uh, negative exponent in the given number of bits in that case whatever the loss of bit will be considered as underflow so overflow and underflow only occurs for positive numbers where when the number is bigger larger positive number and we cannot accommodate the number of bits jumping uh, by the uh, point in that case it is overflow and if the number is positive yet closest to zero means the smallest number and we have to move so many points to reach as close as possible to zero and the number of bits in exponent fall lesser than required then in that case it will be underflow so this is basically the thing that you have to keep in mind now if you would have done uh, visual basic then you would have an idea to store point wala numbers you have to have the data type that is called single and there is another version of it which is called double so in single there are four bytes three for mantisa one for exponent in and in double we have got seven uh, eight bytes out of which seven are for mantisa and one for exponent so obviously you can understand that the significance is of uh, to maintain the accuracy and for that we need to have more bits in uh, mantisa so if there is a, a, an overflow in mantisa that is not con considered as overflow rather that is considered as the breach of accuracy and less precision so now how many bits will be there for mantisa and how many bits will be there uh, for exponent it is actually depending over your own question we have got no idea that what the question will follow but whatever it is it will be given in the question so let's for time being let's suppose that we have got eight bits in uh, mantisa and four bits in exponent and for that we are going to convert the number that we had earlier so eight bits for mantisa and four bits for exponent so the answer that you deduced earlier this answer is incomplete in a way that it is not saved in the given number of bits so let's say you have got eight bits for mantisa and four bits for exponent for all three of these questions now eight bits for mantisa four bits for exponent Let's fill in this mantisa first. How many bits? Eight. From left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have got two more bits. We will use zero to fill in. So that is eight bits. And four bits for exponent, double zero, one zero. From right to left. So this is your actual answer. Similarly, let's take this number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. So this is your answer. Similarly, over here, you will see now something which is different one two three four five six seven eight and we don't have a space for this particular bit so this particular bit will be compromised so this compromise is called that we have lost some of the accuracy and what is that uh, some of the accuracy that is basically uh, 0 0.0625 we have lost it because that is the rightmost bit and on the least significant side it is the loss of accuracy as a very little very small uh, fraction or the decimal number is dropped off so if you can see it again one two three four five six seven eight nine we have got nine bits and we have to fill in how many eight of the bits available so the rightmost bit will be lost and that is basically a loss of this bit which is 0 0.0625 and there is no loss in exponent so we would hardly be having any overflow or underflow issue but we would certainly be having issues with the accuracy so this is your answer after losing a bit in mantisa so this is the complete conversion of floating point uh, number with uh, with the filling in of uh, floating point so let's continue in lecture 3